with an anointed selection leading us into the presence of the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The hymn for the morning says, There's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. There's not a friend. There's not a friend like the to thank you that your compassions did not fail last night 
that grace showed up. Grace showed up in the courthouse. Grace showed up in the church house. Mercy showed up in our house. And here we are this morning. Here we are, hither, thither, and yon, looking in, listening on to this worship service in the name of Jesus. God, we're set to worship you, but we cannot worship you until you come and empower us by your spirit. And so we ask that you pour out your spirit upon us this morning and then dispatch angels to catch us lest we fall. Thank you. Praise you for another opportunity to call on your name. In the name of Jesus, amen and thank you. Oh! 
song all over me. It's in my hands, in my soul, down in my feet. Oh, I feel your power all over me. I feel your power all over me. I feel your power all over me. It's in my hands, in my soul, down in my feet. I feel your power all over me. So down in my feet, oh, I feel your glory all over me. I feel your glory all over me. I feel your glory all over me. It's in my hands, and my soul, down in my feet. I feel your glory all over me.
nice, mighty nice, mighty nice. Feel him moving down in my soul. Uh-uh. I don't know, saints. I think something's about to break out this morning. Bless the name of our Well, we're going to start that breakout with acknowledging our visitors this morning. Are there any persons who are visiting with us for the very first time? Well, praise God, we're all family. And for the, oh, there is one, 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 pray. let's give our visitor a hand praise. If we were uh, behaving as we normally do, we would pass you a microphone, but uh, that is not the case. But we want you to know on behalf of our pastor and our first lady, uh, Reverend and Sister Coffey and the Mount Calvary family, we welcome you. And when the invitation to discipleship is given, if you're here and you're without a church home and you're looking for a church home, well, brother and sister, welcome home. Welcome home. You just respond to the invitation. Come right on down and give us your hands and give the Lord your heart. Amen. Thank you so much for coming. Well, uh, the next thing on the list is September, I mean, August birthdays. Do we have any birthdays? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you, Sister Jennifer, for reminding us that this is birthday month. And on behalf of our pastor, once again, we want to wish you a happy, happy birthday. And we're just glad that you're here with us this morning. Blessing the name of our God. Praise the name of Jesus. August was pastor's birthday month, and we have this. This is our last day to be able to share with our pastor in the loving way that we decided to do here at Mount Calvary. And there is a basket, I believe, out in the office or out in the hallway where you can drop your card, uh, your last minute uh, wishes of love and a happy birthday to our worthy and our deserving pastor as he celebrates his birthday month here uh, as the church has decided to do. Uh, I have just a few announcements. I'm going to try and make them quick and easy for you because we see who's sitting in, in the chair this morning, don't we? Amen. We want, to, we want to get moving here, so we know that the Spirit is already moving. These are our announcements. Uh, first of all, we want to ask you to re please remember Monday morning with the Master. On Monday, uh, all Mondays at 8.30 a.m. where we have prayer and praise, you call into the Mount Calvary Baptist Church Conference line. Uh, it uh, should be in our, in our uh, overhead. And, uh, well, you know, because you're there on Monday, come and pray uh, and praise with us. New member orientation is back in full swing. Uh, went every Wednesday morning in the Family Life Center at 11 a.m. There will be no class, however, on September the 1st. Free vaccines are available in Palm Coast at the public supermarket and CVS Pharmacy. So please, ma'am, please, sir, if you have not had your vaccination and you wish to do so, please avail yourself of these opportunities. Also on Wednesday morning, we want you to be reminded that we are in Bible study with Trustee James Brown, who is our facilitator, and he is taking us through the 33 laws of stewardship that is just blessing our soul. So please, uh, ma'am, please, sir, find your way there. I see something new and exciting is happening here in September. On Saturday, September the 11th, the Queens of Soul, uh, the women's, Mount Calvary's women's ministry is, is putting on an event for us from 10 to 12 in the Family Life Center. I'm sure you'll be hearing more about that. You'll want to be there. Ladies, you want to be there. Also, don't forget to call the church office Monday through Thursday from 10 to 12, uh, 10 to 11, uh, 1, I'm sorry, to ensure seating for Sunday worship. We are still observing COVID-19 COVID protocol, and we need to make room for you. So if you're coming, please call the office and let us know. Also, prayer requests are being taken over the, at, at our website via email, and we want you to uh, link, uh, link in, call in, link up, and give us your prayer request so that we might pray for you because we are a people of prayer, and the church that prays together, you know the saying, it stays together, and we thank God for that. Uh, also, uh, we're asking persons to please be kind and not park in reserved spaces unless authorized to do so, or you have an authorized parking permit displayed on your tag or in your window. Thank you so very much. And as always, we have those uh, that we want to remember in prayer. 
especially our trustee and our trusted and, and uh, deserving deacons who are in need of prayer, Deacon Simpson, Deacon Murray, and his lovely wife, Susan Murray. Please, ma'am, please, sir, remember them in our prayers. Uh, now, this is a last-minute announcement given by our able chair that we all should be made aware of, and that is this. You're wondering if we're, we're going to continue with the plan of having double worship services on Sunday morning in September. Well, while we are still considering additional times for Sunday worship services due to the rising of COVID-19, there are currently no plans to do so at this time. So until further notice, Sunday worship service continues at 9.30 a.m. only. Continue, remember to join us in person by calling the office and leaving your name if you will be there in person. Or you may visit us on Facebook or live streaming. God bless you. And to those of you who are visiting with us today via live streaming or the website, we welcome you in the name of the Lord. And to tell the truth, we might just be a little jealous that we're not sitting in our pajamas, but we, but we kind of like it around here, don't we? Yes, we do. But thank you so much for those of you who are visiting us via the World Wide Web or uh, another means of wire or another platform. We bless the Lord for you. Well, it's now time for giving. It's now stewardship time. And we want our deacons to come and prepare this place, this sanctified spot that we reserve for those of you who are coming to bring your offerings, your tithes and offerings to the Lord. Kindly follow the leadership of, of our uh, usher under the leadership, our ushers under the leadership of Dr. Guy Thompson, and they will lead you to the place of giving. we thank you for these offerings that have been returned to you that have been given into the hands that gave we recognize that all things come of thee O Lord and we've returned that that came from you now bless these offerings bless those who gave them use them for your glory and your purpose now in Jesus name amen Jesus. I really need you, Jesus. I 
thank you, Jesus. Well, we want to thank the Lord for how he's brought us up to this point. And, and now it's my happy privilege to present to you the preacher for the morning. I tell you, our pastor knows what we need when we need it. And he has uh, sent to us this morning, via the Spirit of God, a gifted orator, psalmist, and leader in the person of Elder William B. Robinson III, one who God has ordained and anointed to be a prophetic voice in this hour for all generations and across denominational divides. Through the mandate and mantle that rests upon his life and by way of preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, he has been graced to equip, empower, educate, and encourage the lives of God's people all over the world, having ministered in five countries. Now, this is not in Elder's bio, but it's in my spirit to say it. When I first heard this young man preach, I said to Pastor, I said, Pastor, he's an evangelist. God's call on his life is a call to the nations. And Pastor just looked at me. I sensed it, I saw it, and I knew it. And now I see it here in his bio. It has been confirmed. This man has the spirit of an evangelist among his other gifts. Amen. Elder Robinson is a product of the Solid Rock Deliverance Holiness Church founded by the late Bishop John E. Shingles in Jacksonville, Florida. It was there that he preached his initial sermon at age 13 where God confirmed and cultivated his call to ministry. Elder has come through the ranks. Duval County Public School System Bethune-Cookman University, where he completed his undergrad work and obtained a BA in religion and philosophy with a concentration in Christian studies. He is a graduate student at our pastor's alma mater, Samuel D. Proctor School of Theology and Virginia Union University. Most recently, Elder Robinson served for more than two years as youth minister here at Mount Calvary where he came to be admired for his great gifts. Somebody say amen. amen. Christ-like, cooperative, and humble-spirited, he also served as youth and young adult pastor at the Day Spring Baptist Church located in Jacksonville, Florida. Now this is the one that's going to get you. Listen up. In June of 2021, he was appointed lead pastor of the Everlasting Life Church of God in Eustis, Florida. Elder has his own congregation, folks. Give God some praise. That's right, it's okay, you can stand up. We've got time, yes indeed. We can give God a hand of praise and thank God for this young man who God has called to be in charge of his own congregation. And I praise the Lord that he didn't go in a spirit of mess. Amen? Amen? He went with a spirit of love. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. Don't lose your pretty ways. All right. Among all these accolades, Elder Robinson's motto is God first, family second. His greatest joy in life is being a natural son, a spiritual son, a brother to his siblings, and a mentor and role model for all those who look to him for guidance and advice. After our, our lovely and wonderful praise and worship team has sung for us a sermonic selection, the next voice that we hear will be that of the Lord speaking to us through Elder William Robinson. Hear ye him. Amen? Amen.
big hand of praise but there is no other way is no other way see you can only sing stuff like that if you mean it but there is no other way how many know you tried every other way you tried to go to the left and the right but you learned that there is no other way. There's no other way. I can live without you. Come on and put those hands together. Come on, if you know that there's no other way but to live as Jesus, as your Lord and liberator, you ought to give him some praise. Because you tried living for this person, you tried living for this thing, but there is no other way. I can live. No, no. somebody don't touch them just look at them say there ain't no other way tell them every other way is a lie hallelujah there is no other way hallelujah you may be seated in the presence of God every other way the Bible says for the name of the Lord is a strong tower and that the righteous run into it and they are saved and there's no other way.
but by the name of Jesus. Somebody put your hands together and give God some praise. I, I know we moved the service up a little bit early, but I still feel like praising God this morning. Because when I think about every other alternative that you may have tried and it failed, but it was one way that worked out every time, and that was gone by the way of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One more time, put your hands together if you know that there's no other way. There's no other way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. Would you help us help us transition by come on putting those hands together one last time and giving God a great, great big round of applause. Mount Calvary is good to be in the house of the Lord. One more time. I am godly grateful and exceedingly excited for this opportunity to be before you. Uh, my brothers and sisters in this labor of love, we know as ministry. Amen. And I don't know about y'all, but I'm still just excited for all that God has done and he's doing. In the midst of the tumultuous season we find ourselves in, God is still good, somebody. I know that some of us, many of us, have gone through so much in this season. But in spite of it all, we serve a God who's still sovereign. And he still reigns on the throne. And for that reason alone, he's worthy of all of the praise, glory, adulation, and adoration. And we bless his name on this morning. What a joy and a privilege it is to be back here on hallowed ground. Amen. The Mount Calvary Baptist Church of Palm Coast. Come on, give yourselves a great big hand. And every time I come back to this place and this space, amen, I am overwhelmed with emotion. I am inundated, amen, with just thoughts and memories of how, amen, this ministry loved on me, imparted and instilled in me. I want you all to know that you want to always be family. Amen. And so we are so grateful for the seeds of, of love that you all have uh, planted. And we pray that from a distance we are making you proud. And we want you to know that this ministry has a son that is never too far away. Amen. I got the call from uh, Reverend Coffee, And I say, Rev, you know, you, you ain't even got, you know I'm coming. Amen. I will, I will be there. Uh, and to that point, would you guys give God praise for our leader and our pastor? Amen. Reverend Edwin Coffey. Come on, you can do just a little bit better than that. A true man of God who has and who is uh, diligently and fervently serving this place, uh, this branch of Zion. And he's doing a phenomenal, phenomenal work. And I praise God for him. Y'all notice that I said our pastor because there's some people that you just can't get rid of. Amen. And as I look down through the years, my time at Cookman, he was such a light and a lamp uh, to my path. And I praise God for him. And uh, he really helped the young preacher out. Amen. And just to see how uh, much we had in common. He graduated from Bethune-Cookman. I graduated from Bethune-Cookman. <laughs> Amen. He was in the concert chorale. He sings a little bit. I was in the concert chorale. I sing a little bit. Amen. He graduated from Virginia Union. I'm going to Virginia Union. Amen. And uh, he's, he, he, he's a member of Alpha. And now I'm a member of Alpha for Alpha. Amen. And so he's, he's just been such a light and a lamp. And we praise God for pillars. How, how many know you ought not never allow familiarity to a person? to rob you of the gift and the special anointing that they are to you. So just for me, would you put your hands together for your pastor, our pastor, Pastor Coffey, whom we love and adore. We bless your man of God and his lovely, lovely wife, amen, who, I'm, who I love equally. To everybody, to all of the reverend clergy, uh, to the deacons, uh, to the media ministry, to all of my family here, uh, to the young people who are just growing up, Lord have mercy. I say, Lord, has it been this long? Uh, to everybody, we love you uh, and we appreciate you. And it is a blessing and a humbling honor for us to be here on today. Y'all give the music ministry a great big hand. They always do a phenomenal job. I love you and appreciate you.
appreciate you. Amen. To the gospel according to Matthew, I'm not going to hold you long this morning. Uh, one thing, uh, Deacon Joseph, that the pandemic taught us is that everything that we thought we had to do in two hours, we can do in an hour and a half. Amen. And so now, amen, Reverend Fontaine, Reverend Watson, I am, I don't know, I've been spoiled because I'm no longer a friend, uh, fan of a long church. Amen. The gospel according to Matthew uh, chapter 6. The gospel according to Matthew chapter 6. I'm going to ask that you stand as you have the reading of God's word. We're going to go to uh, Matthew chapter 6. And this, this, this morning I am going to read uh, three different passages of scripture within this same chapter amen and for the sake of brevity for the sake of our subject I want to be accurate but I also want to save time Matthew chapter 6 and once you have it why don't you say I got it amen and I'm going to read for you I'm going to highlight from your hearing first verses 1 through 8 in the New Living Translation it says watch out Don't do your good deeds publicly to be admired by others, for you will lose the reward from your Father in heaven. When you give to someone in need, don't do as the hypocrites do, blowing trumpets in the synagogues and streets to call attention to their acts of charity. I tell you the truth, they have received all the reward they will ever get. But when you give to someone in need, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. Give your gifts in private. Your father who sees everything will reward you. Amen. Now I want to go down to verses 19 through 21. It says, don't store up treasures here on earth where moths eat them and rust destroys them where thieves break in and steal. Store your treasures in heaven where moths and rust cannot destroy and thieves do not break in and steal. Wherever your treasure is, there the desires of your heart will be also. Now, last verse, jump down to verse 33. Seek ye first, somebody shout first, the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously and he will give you everything you need seek ye first the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously and he will give you everything you need and friends with these few fleeting moments that I have I want to tag this text with the title uh, a desire to be seen versus the desire to be sent Desire to be seen versus the desire to be sent. Let us have a word of prayer. Sovereign Savior, mighty Master, we thank you now for your love, for your grace, and your mercy that you've given to us and for this moment that you've called us to. Anoint these lips of clay so that something may be said to edify your body and your people. God, William Robinson can't do it in his own strength so special I'm not so smart but it is your grace that is sufficient to carry us through this moment and now Lord as I always pray pray that there's no distractions in the clothes that I wear but there's deliverance in the clarity in which I'm able to declare pray now that there's no distractions in the promptness of my speech but there's deliverance in the power in which I'm able to preach pray now that you will exempt us and eliminate us from showmanship Allow your gospel to flow freely from my lips. Hide me behind the cross. Where Satan may be horrified, your people may be edified, and more so you glorified. We sign, seal, and deliver this prayer in the strong, saving, sovereign, and satisfying name of our Savior. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. You may be seated. Uh, uh, as we get ready to get into the ministry.
message, y'all. Pray for me because I can see y'all better already. I'm still getting used to these glasses. Amen. A lot has changed since we were last together. And so uh, they may be coming on and off as I'm still getting adjusted to them. The desire to be seen versus the desire to be sent. Beloved, I started a series about the kingdom agenda, talking about kingdom at our church. And the Lord uh, brought me to Matthew chapter 6. In that series, uh, wanted to talk about some of the characteristics of individuals serving the kingdom. One of the things that's important for us to understand as we're serving in the kingdom is know that what we do for Christ is not necessarily for our own benefit, but it is to glorify God. As I was developing this message, I was thinking that I... I was one of the first generations to really reap the benefits of the advent of social media. Social media, friends, in my estimation, is both, watch this, a blessing and a curse. We now live in a society where it's the aim of most people to be seen. And as a result, we use filters to develop Create a lifestyle that is not necessarily who we authentically and genuinely are. We use filters. We use cameras and pictures to depict us in a certain light because we want to be seen in and from a certain view and or perspective. We want to be seen. We want people to see our good side. So we must get the right angle. we got to get just the right lighting because we want to make sure that people capture us from the angle that we think or perceive that best emanates who we are. That's why, that's why we want people to catch us in the act of being generous and being benevolent to people and towards events in our community. The media... And social media, friends, is both a blessing and a curse. Don't get me wrong, though. I, I, I do thank God for social media. In fact, it has provided us the opportunity during this pandemic season to minister to people all over the world. And for that, we ought to give God a hand praise right there. In fact, it has leveled the playing field, if you will, and literally given every ministry, regardless of demographics, regardless of its members, it has given every church the opportunity to have a worldwide platform to minister the gospel of Jesus Christ. But today specifically, I want to talk about the difference in those who want to be seen and others who desire to be sent. Because I want to talk about I want to talk about the juxtaposition, if you will, and those who want to be seen doing ministry and the others who desire to be sent to do the ministry. And there are some people, even in the body of Christ, their whole mission, their whole motive, their entire MO is to be seen so that they appear to be doing work of the kingdom. So they like to flaunt their gifts and talents the way they sing preach, play their instruments, and so on. And here it is, although we praise God for their giftings, because it can be edifying to the body of Christ, I like this, don't miss it, church, their gifts are all in vain if God is not glorified. In other words, when, when God is not being exalted, all of our efforts are empty. Okay, y'all missed that. All of our singing, empty. All of our shouting and dancing, empty. All of our speaking in tongues, empty. All of our programs, empty. And that's why I like John chapter 12 and verse 36 that declares, And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto me. And here it is, beloved. If Jesus understood this in his death, then we have to be aware of it in the delivery of our gifts that it's not for my own ego, it's not for my own self-gratification, here it is, but for the glorification of our Savior. 
<laughs> and can I tell you, I'm scared of people in church. I'm scared of people who get caught up in their own rap sheet, in their own resume. Because God is not impressed with people who want to be seen. But God says, I need some people that want to be sent to do the work of ministry. And I was telling somebody the other day, I said, Rev, in this season, God is getting ready to separate the wheat from the tear. Because here it is, pastoring in this pandemic season, there's one thing we've learned, Reverend Watson, that it's not about the glitz and the glamour and the gleam. But there's somebody who can say, the reason I can't quit is because God sent me to it. The reason I can't give up on the assignment, the reason I can't give up on this purpose is because God sent me to it. And I wish I had somebody in here who would give God praise because in the midst of all of the hell and the calamity that's going on in our world, you still know that God sent you to an assignment that you can't stop until you fulfill the assignment that God has placed on your life. And Jesus understood it. He says, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men unto me. And he understood that if he could just be lifted up, he'd draw people to him. Don't miss this, y'all. Even Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, that we have this treasure in earthen vessels so that the excellency of our powers may be of God and not of us. Y'all missed it. I like this because what Paul is saying, Paul is saying we've got treasure on the inside of us and the treasure is to point to the one who gave us the powers in the first place. Lord have mercy. And may I suggest that's why you can't trust everybody with gifts. That's why you can't trust everybody to things because there's some people who are sent to understand that the excellence of the gift and the treasure that God has given me is not necessarily for people to clap and praise William Robinson but Paul says the excellence of the power in me is to point back to the one that gave it to me in the first place and is there anybody in here that can say that's how I'm able to overlook the rumors that's how I'm able to overlook what people are saying about me because if it was for my own self gratification if it was for my own self aggrandizement I would have gave up a long time ago I would have sat down from the ministry I would have sat down from the choir I would have stopped banging my tires but I've got to show somebody that God has put a treasure on the inside of you not so that you can get the glory not so that you can be praised not so that people I know y'all ain't gonna like this not so that people can call your name but if you lift him up above every problem if you lift him up above every circumstance if you lift him up above every issue if you lift him up above every pain if you lift him up above every downtrodden state God says it is in that moment that you know that you are sent and it is your sin that you're going to draw people unto me is there anybody in here that can say preacher in the introduction of your message you preaching a little good now because there's been times in my life in ministry where I wanted to give up but I understood that it's not just something that I woke up and wanted to do, but God called me to this thing. He, he called me to this ministry. He called me to this assignment. There's a difference, beloved, in those who want to be seen and those who want to be sent. And I like it because Paul says the excellency of our powers may be of God in us. In other words, when you properly use the tools that God has given you, people ought not clap for you as much as they do for Christ oh Lord have mercy I know y'all ain't gonna like this because here it is the excellence of your power should point to his preeminence Lord have mercy I the excellence of your power should point to his preeminence and here it is I know sometimes people may think that I'm socially awkward because people say oh the preacher you do this and you do this and sometimes I just say to God be the glory God thank you because I've learned that you ought not get so caught up in your own rap sheet because there's about five people out there and I'll make number six in the pulpit and we'll shout all by ourselves here 
here it is. The reason why we can't get caught up in our own rap sheet is because we know that it's nothing that we've done. It's solely because of the grace, the power, the mercy, and the hand of God on my life. And can anybody give God praise? Because even in a pandemic season, you've learned that he's preserved you, not necessarily that you can be seen, but so that you can be a testimony to somebody else. Baby, if he bought me out, he can do the same thing for you. And that's why I like what the elder preacher will say, that there is no secret what God can do if he's done it for you. If he done it for others, he can do the same thing for you. And somebody ought to be giving God praise to be a living testament in a testimony to somebody in the sanctuary right now that's ready to give up. Baby, he kept me through the divorce. Baby, he kept me through the repossession. Baby, he kept me through the mental breakdown. Baby, he kept me when I thought I was out down and out. He kept me even when I was sick. And anybody give God a kept praise? And your testimony is this morning the reason why I can't display myself in such a high fashion is because it was nothing but the grace, the mercy, and the favor of God. And that's what the Apostle Paul told the church at Corinth. He said, no, no, no. Don't get caught up in who I am. Don't worry about my resume. Don't worry about how I'm able to recite the, the, the Levitical law. But he says, I'm sent to this assignment. Anybody can give God praise because now you understand the reason you had to survive the hell you went through ain't necessarily for your own problems. But God says, I've sent you to somebody to help show them how to survive some struggling seasons of their life. And I know, I know Reverend Watson, that's not everybody's testimony. Because in that case, here it is, Deacon Kirk, that is for the mature believers. There's some, there, 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 there are some people who understand and they finally get it. God, I understand now why I had to cry so many tears. God, I understand now why you had me in the season that you did. God, I understand now why you allowed me to hit rock bottom because sometimes God has to allow you to hit rock bottom to discover that he is the rock at the bottom because he is a rock in a weary land. Can anybody give God praise because you survived and God sent you to survive some things to be a living epistle God has sent God has sent some of us here it is, beloved. I like this because you ought to understand that it points to his preeminence. All of our power should point people, should point men back into the direction of the one who gave it to us. And can I tell you, y'all, this is a side note for the body of Christ. And this is what God would have us to understand, family, as it relates to building up his kingdom. Because we're not in this race to get to mega church status. Whew. We're not in this to compete with other ministries in other cities. We're not in this so that we can get YouTube and Facebook famous. I know y'all don't like this, but here it is. The reason we have to operate in the spirit of excellence at every turn and the spirit of humility is because when we represent Christ correctly, this ain't for everybody, souls are cultivated for the kingdom. Lord have mercy. When we become living epistles, it is at that point that God allows his light to emanate to and through us so that souls can be cultivated for the kingdom. I know this is not popular. I know that we're now living a time in a dispensation, if you will, or, or a period of time or era where this type of preaching may not be popular. I know that people don't get excited about souls. We get excited about healing and deliverance and, 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 and you do this. You run around the car seven times. It'll be yours. You'll have the car. You name it and claim it, have it and grab it, do all of these other things but anybody in here still get excited about souls being saved 
Oh, my God. And that's what we need in this world today. And that's why God has called us to this pandemic season because there are people all over the world wondering how could a sovereign God let this happen? How could a God do this? How could he take my loved one? How could God do this? But God says, no, 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 baby. Don't worry. I'm sending just a few people to let somebody in the earth know that I'm still sovereign, that I'm still divine. And can I tell you, that's why you can't cuss them out like you want to. Uh, not that you forgot how to use the cuss words, but because you've been sent to that place. Uh, that's why God won't let you quit the job just yet. Uh, not because you don't have the skills to move, but God says, I've called you to this place. And somebody ought to be glad that God has trust you in this season to send you to an assignment so that souls can be cultivated. That's what we are, beloved. That's what I want you to understand. We don't get so caught up in your gifts. Lord, I, I, I love Mount Calvary. And I know all of the myriad and various gifts that you have in this place. But don't get caught up in beloved. The Lord gave it to you because when he's lifted up, somebody is drawn to him. I, uh, don't, 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 don't get caught up in a particular spot or a seat because although your gift and your anointing got you there, God wants you to use that gift and anointing not for a seat, not for a title or a placement. It's because when you use it, you ain't trying to be seen, but you understand that you're sent. When Christ is represented correctly, souls are cultivated for kingdom. And here it is, friends, at the time of our text, Matthew chapter 6 is a continuation of Jesus' sermon on the mount. He is, he, is, he is, in fact, speaking to his disciples about what kingdom work looks like in the life of the believer. He's talking to his disciples now, and at this point, y'all, Jesus is, he's doing miracles, he's healing people, and here it is, he's at, Reverend Watson, here it is, he's at the apex of his ministry. And so now, Jesus is popular, and so his disciples are following him, and they are helping him, and they are seeing him develop all of this popularity. And what Jesus tells them, he says, no, 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 don't do your public deeds to be seen. And I like this, beloved. That's what he tells me. He says, I'm not doing this to be seen because Jesus understood what the disciples didn't. He says, because watch this. Jesus understood that the same people who would praise him for the miracle and the healing would be the same people who would turn around a couple months later and be the same ones to persecute him. And so that's why he tells them, he says, no, 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 don't do your public deeds. He says, don't get it confused. Don't let people sing your, saying your name and saying praises. Don't let, because you see people walking around us and gathering around us, get to your head. Can I tell you, one of the dangerous things in the body of Christ, beloved, is somebody who believes and get caught up in their own resume. Because that will be the very thing that leads to their demise. And Jesus says, no, no, don't do it to get your name called and watch this he says because if you do it that'll be your only reward in other words the claps of people will be the only thing that you receive when in fact I've got a, be a better reward for you when you do it in private Lord, church folk don't know when to shout. Somebody's testimony is, Elder, you talking right because there was a season of my life where I was serving in obscurity and I continued to serve, but it was only a matter of time before God rewarded me in public. Is that anybody's testimony that you learned how to serve? You learned how to stay in your corner and do what it was that God called you to do for a season, but God, after a certain time, he lifted you up and he rewarded you for your righteous works. And as he's talking to the disciples, as he's talking to his disciples, there are three things I want to point out from the scripture that we read this morning, beloved, that are going to help us understand the difference between those who desire to be seen and those who desire to be sent. <clears throat> because I still believe in the body of Christ, Mount Calvary, there are some people who know that God has sent them to the assignment. Here it is, number one, 
Jesus is telling them through the scripture, he says, sent individuals understand the purpose of their service. That's number one. <clears throat> they understand the purpose of their service. Here it is. The purpose of their service to the kingdom is not to be seen, but to serve. It is in here the first verse where Jesus addresses the danger of attempting to cultivate an image of righteousness. Because in verses 1 through 5, in the Greek language, the word that is used there is the word righteousness. And so Jesus is telling him, listen y'all, don't get caught up in thinking that you're so good, that you're so righteous, that you're so benevolent. He says, when in actuality, because when you think that you're righteous, you rotten the assignment. And can I tell you, there are a whole bunch of people who are still preaching who are still singing, who are still doing things in the, in, 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 in the name of the Lord, but in actuality, they rotten the assignment. Uh, and I can I tell you, I don't ever want to be somebody who gets so righteous that I end up rottening the assignment that God is trying to send me to. And I love it, beloved. I like this because even the Bible says that all of our righteousness is as filthy rags. So there ought to be somebody in here that repent today and say Lord I'm sorry if I ever tried to exalt myself if I ever and that's why sometimes you've got to do our own introspective spiritual check you've got to check yourself before you come through those doors you've got to check yourself because you, when you walk through those sanctuaries but can I tell you it's not about your checkbook it's not about your degree it's not about your pedigree but I wish somebody in here that said Lord if you just use me I'll be satisfied anywhere to, any way and anyhow you use me God I'll be satisfied if you have me to usher I'll be satisfied if you have me to be a deacon I'll be satisfied if you use me in the media ministry I'll be satisfied all right y'all may not be able to shout but there's about five of us in here that says God even in this season I still want you to use me I still want you to allow me to be a blessing and anywhere you send me I'm gonna serve anywhere you use me I'm still gonna serve You've got to understand the purpose of your service. And here it is. Watch this. Verses 1 through 8, they do not contradict Matthew chapter 5. In Matthew chapter 5, in his previous comments, Jesus tells his disciples, let your light so shine before men. Lord, I'm getting happy already. And here it is. Uh, uh, it. It, it, it's not a contradiction because when I read this, uh, um, uh, Reverend Fontaine, I said, Lord, now, now you said let your light shine. But, you, but what he's really saying here is that as believers, you are to be seeing doing good works. And you must not do good works simply to be seen. I got to say that again. As a believer, you ought to be able to be seen doing good works but you must not do them simply to be seen that's why friends I get nervous and I know this don't happen at Mount Calvary I know this don't happen here but I, I get nervous when we only find people who come out when the cameras are around I, 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 I get nervous uh, Reverend Watson when there, when there are people who only come out if their name is going to be on the program. I, I, I know this don't happen at Mount Calvary, but, but I wish there was somebody in here <laughs> that you just get excited at the opportunity that God would even use a vessel like you and his kingdom. I like it because I go back to the Apostle Paul to parallel this text because you understand that Paul wasn't always Paul. Paul was Saul of Tarsus. He was a persecutor of Christians and God used his jack up broke leg, broke busted and disgusted itself and that's what motivated Paul every time he was persecuted, every time he was locked up. He says in spite of me, God still uses me. Lord have mercy. Somebody ought to be giving God praise this morning because he used you or he's using you in spite of you. Alright, everybody may not know your testimony but here it is. The Lord knows it 
and in spite of what you used to do, where you used to go, what you used to say, who you used to be with, he still uses you. And can anybody give God praise? Because the reason you can serve in silence is because you remember who you used to be. You remember who and what you used to do. And in spite of it all, you can give God praise because he saved a wretch like you. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like I once was lost, but now I'm found blind, but now I see somebody ought to give God praise because it's a privilege to serve and he saved you. got to understand the purpose of your service because when you don't understand the purpose of your service and you try to be righteous you're rotten at everything God has for you but here it is if you're going to be sitting not only must you understand the purpose of your service you've got to understand here it is the power of prayer in secret Listen to what the Bible says, verse 5, Matthew chapter 6. When you pray, don't be like the hypocrites who love to pray in public on street corners and in the synagogues where everyone can see them. I tell you the truth, that is all the reward they will get. But when you pray, go away by yourself. Shut the door behind you. and Pray to your father in private. Then your father who sees everything will reward you. Anybody know that there's power in secret prayer? I know everybody want to have the mic. I know some people want to get up here and show us how eloquent and, 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 and how well they can pray. And they want to become verbose and use all of these words to show us in their prayer. But anybody believe, like my late great-grandmother, in the power of private prayer? I never shall forget there'll be times my grandmother would be in the house cooking. Everybody would be over her house and she just still away. And one day I say, Grandma, why when you always had people over your house, you just leaving. You got company up in the front. I say, the family's up here. And one time, y'all, I decided to follow Grandma into her room. She'd go in her room and she shut the door. And she had a little closet in her room, all of her hats and dresses and shoes. But I noticed she had just a little spot space in the closet just just as so she said no 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 don't 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 put nothing in that space and one day she left from all of the laughing and the giggling and the effervescentness that was going home and she walked in her room and I sneaked behind her to the room and when I sneaked behind her this one time in the room I heard some noise I heard some hand clapping and some speaking in tongue I cracked open the door just a little bit and I saw grandma praying and I had a question and after grandma got finished praying I said I said grandma why did your prayer at church sound different than your prayer at home she says because baby it's more prayer it's more power in my closet and can I tell somebody that I still believe in the power of secret prayer anybody know that God still shows up in secret prayer anybody know that miracles still happen in secret prayer anybody know that blessings still fall down in secret prayer anybody know that God still answers secret prayer how many people can give God praise because you've seen a manifestation of miracles from your time of secret prayer I to pray in secret. And I like this because listen to what Charles Spurgeon says. Charles Spurgeon, who many consider to be uh, the prince or one of the princes of preaching. He says, Christians' prayers are measured by weight <laughs> and not by length. Many of the most prevailing prayers that have been prayer have been as short as they were strong. Listen to this other quote. It says, when we try to impress God or worse, other people with our many words, we deny that God is a loving yet holy. Instead, we should follow the counsel of Ecclesiastes 5 and 2. God is in heaven. We are on earth. Therefore, let your words be few. 
And I know that there are some people in here, and I know that there are some people in the body of Christ, and I told them this at my church, that whatever we do, let's do it so that we can glorify God and not so that we can be magnified. We got to understand that there's power in secret prayer. The eloquence of prayer consists in its fervency and desire and the simplicity of faith. I tell somebody this morning that just because you pray a long prayer don't mean that it got heard any more than a short and a quiet prayer. And notice what Jesus says. He says, when you pray, don't be like the hypocrites. In other words, he tells us that there's a name for these people who want to be seen and who want to be displayed but lack the power thereof. He says, when you pray, pray in secret. And can I tell you, beloved, that a lot of us, that what we're looking for in our life, can I tell you that most of it is going to start not when you get the microphone and pray at church. But most of the miracles and the doors you're waiting to happen and open in your life won't be initiated until you start in secret prayer. Lord have mercy because can I tell you what I like about this is because when you do it in secret, it follows you in public. When you do it in private, Adrian, here it is, it shows up in public. That's why when I first got to my church in July, y'all, I'm convinced that they thought something was wrong with me. Because when I first got to my church, first Sunday in July, we didn't have a musician. But when I got there, I was already happy. Because what I did in private showed up when I got there in public. Lord have mercy, I got to let this thing go. And can I suggest to you, friends, that's why there are some people who come into the sanctuary and they sit down. There are some people who come into the sanctuary and they need to be stirred up. They need a whole lot of this and they need a whole lot of that. But there's about four of us in here that on our way to the sanctuary, our spirit was already lifted. And as a result, what we did in private showed up in public. That's why I can lift my hands. That's why I can give them praise because my private life is showing up in a public setting I'm done you gotta understand if you're sent you gotta understand the purpose of your service the power of prayer and secret but lastly I'm done here it is I promise you in verse 33 you gotta know that there are providential provisions of satisfaction yeah, providential provisions of satisfaction. Elder Robinson, what are you talking about? It says here, seek ye first the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously and he will give you everything you need. Seek ye first the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously and he will give you everything you need. Watch this church. In other words, what people try to obtain by being seen, the Lord already has and is capable of giving. Lord have mercy. So the praise and the reward that people try to obtain by being displayed God in his omnipotent power already has and is capable of giving. And in other words, beloved, here it is. When you serve long enough, when you do what it is that God has called you to do, when you are sent and you find yourself running up against obstacles and adversity, God is able to make some providential provisions of satisfaction. And there ought to be somebody here that can give God praise. Because every time you ran up against a problem and you say, Lord, I know you sent me to do this. I know that you've called me to do this. I know that you've cultivated me to do this. And here it is. Every time God opened up a door, God made a way. He cleared a path for you. And somebody in here ought to be able
able to give God praise because he's able to give you provisions for whatever he's called you to. And can I tell you, this is a formula. Verse 33. Verse 33 is a formula. He says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all of these things will be added unto you. Can I tell you that maybe the reason why we we have not been recipients of verse 33 is because we got the formula wrong. We've been seeking on our own what we want and then trying to serve the kingdom. But God says, no, no, no. There's a way that I've set this thing up. And there's somebody in here, you have to learn that it's not your degrees, it's not your connections, it's not who you're tied to, it's not what you have, but it wasn't until you started to seek the face of God that everything you stood in the need of, God was capable of doing. The story about a young man, this young man, straight A student, and he used to go down to his local uh, corner store by his house. And his mother would send him to the local corner store to buy in the house to get different things, a straight-A student. And he always liked to just brag about how smart he was, how good he was. And when he started going to the store, he noticed that the gentleman in the store would always give him free candy. Young man, here you go. I want to give you this. And he'd go to school, he'd go in his community, He'd brag about, man, look at this. I, I got this. I can get this for free. I'm a straight-A student. I went to the store. Every time I go in there, he gives me this. He gives me this. Never asked the store owner why was he giving it to him for free. And the store owner said, son, stopped him one day. You want to know why I give you all of these things free? The young man says, yeah, because I'm a straight-A student. He says, no, that's not it. He says, well, maybe because I do everything I need to do in the community, I never get in trouble. Every time I'm displayed somewhere, it's because I've done something that's noteworthy and worth being celebrated. He said, no, that's not it. He said, son, the reason why I give you something for free every time you come into this store, you don't even know it, but your late father and I were best friends. And every time I see you, I see your father. And he says, as a result, I give you something for free. Church folk don't know when to shout. Can I tell you, beloved? You know your scent when every time people see you, they see the father. And can I tell you, I made up in my mind a long time ago that I don't want to go nowhere and people can't see me and not see the father. Can you give God praise? Because even on your job, when people see you, they say it's something about her. It's something about him. And can I tell you, that's what I love about being sent because there are times in our life where people don't necessarily see us, but they see the Father on the inside of us. Come on, give God a great big hand praise if you know that you're sent. Everybody's standing. Everybody's standing. Everybody standing. Everybody standing. Everybody standing. In this season, what we need in this season, Mount Calvary, is people who are sent to the assignment. We need individuals who understand the time and the season that we're in. And what I'm learning, Deacon Kirk, Deacon Joseph, what I'm learning is that much of what we think we want to hear is not necessarily what we need. One of the most difficult parts of being in any type of ministerial capacity during this season is having to incline your spiritual ear to the mouth of God as you minister to people who are going through a hurting season. 
And so what you may have wanted to preach, what you may have wanted to say, what you may have wanted to do, it's not necessarily what God is calling you to do. And God sent me here today. But no doubt in my mind, he sent me to let somebody know, look around you. In the midst of everybody who's gone on, who's gone away, in the midst of all that we've lost, in terms of our possessions, our jobs, so on and so forth. You're still here because God sent and he's commissioned you to be in this place, to be in this station. That's what I need somebody to understand because you may be wanting to give up, you may be wanting to give in, you may be wanting to ebb, you may be wanting to succumb. And I know you come to church and you smile under your mask, you speak, you drive up in your night car and all of these things, but internally, you want to give up. God says, well, I want you to tell somebody today, and the point of this message, that I have sent them, I've commissioned them, I've cultivated them for the assignment of God on their life. I want to encourage somebody today. I want to pray for some one person under the sound of my voice. I may not know your struggle. These people here may not know your struggle. But God in heaven knows. I want everybody to lift your hands. When your spirit with my whole and my, and my with oh, oh, oh. oh Lord, yeah. Come on, everybody, lift it up before I pray. I'll say, I'll say yes, yes more to, yes, your will. to your will and to your will. I'll, I'll say yes, yes more. just a little bit. Every hand lifted, every hand lifted. Father, in the name of Jesus, you sent me here for a purpose. And God, regardless of what I wanted to do, I feel your presence in here today because there's somebody under the sound of my voice. They're getting ready to throw in the towel. But understand, help them to understand that the excellency of their power is to point to you and it is in that that you'll give them strength to carry on. Touch every man, touch every woman, touch every boy, touch every girl under the sound of my voice. Give them strength. Give them power. Strengthen them, God, to continue to run the race that you've given them. Strengthen hearts, minds, and souls that have been depleted of spiritual energy because of the taxation of what we've been through as a nation, as a world. Touch right now in the name of Jesus. Touch somebody, God. Undergird us. Give us strength. Give us power. Give us peace. Where our mind won't allow us to stop wondering. Give it to us in the name of Jesus. Touch somebody right now. Give them strength. Empower their inner man. Stir them up in the name of Jesus. Do what it is you've called them to do. Give them power, God, to carry out the assignment. Shake them up, Lord. Stir them up, Lord, in the name of Jesus, so that they can do what it is you've called them to do, God. Every house, every man, every woman, every boy, every girl, touch us right now. 
It is in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 There may be somebody here today. There may be somebody here who, first, you don't know Jesus in the pardon of your sin. Somebody, and we want to give you that opportunity because in order for you to understand the reason why he sent you or why he saved you, you've got to accept him as your Lord and your liberator. There may be somebody here today. And if that's you, I want you to come down and we'll help you. The Bible says that if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord, you shall be saved. That's the requirement. We're not going to tarry with you. We're not going to do any, none of that. But we want you to understand. We want you to make sure that in this time, you know who your Lord is. And you know who you belong to without the shadow of a doubt. My second appeal is for those of you you may not have a church home. You may be here. You may be looking for a place that you want to connect with. Can I tell you, I've been to this place. And I know that this is a place to be cultivated. This is a place to grow. There are mature saints and believers in this house who are able to walk with you on your journey, aid you, and guide you. As you walk along this Christian journey, this is a good place to be. God has sent and stationed people here so that you can grow and develop. Will there be one? Help me sing this song while we're waiting. Come on, let's sing it. And, and my answer will be yes, Lord. Yes, come on, build it up. I'll say yes. I'll say yes, Lord. someone listening to us by way of the internet you're on Facebook you're listening to live stream and the Lord has touched your heart and you know that you have a need for the Lord Jesus Christ in your life you need to dial yourself down so that you can dial him up and if you are here and you're listening to us we want you to call us there's someone waiting to receive your prayer request call us at 386-447 Five seven one nine. That's three eight six four four seven five seven one nine. There's something about this message that has touched your soul, that has touched you at your very core. 
and you know that you need Christ in your life, please call. We have prayer intercessors. We have prayer warriors who are waiting to pray for you. Please, ma'am, please, sir, why don't you give Jesus a chance? Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Elder, for that powerful, powerful, powerful word of God. We're now going to call upon uh, our Reverend Watson to share with us parting words and give us our benediction and thank God for this powerful service. Let the church say amen. amen. The scripture said, "We a man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. We have had food here today. Amen. Bless the name of the Lord. Let's give the Lord a hand clap. Thank you, Elder Robinson. Bless you. We've been really fed here today wonderfully. We've been really, really blessed. Thank God for the message. Thank God for the message. Amen. I believe this brings us to the end of this worship experience. Let us go in the name of the Lord because we really have some food to dwell there upon. We shall have the benediction and then may the Lord God bless you real good. Let us look to the Lord. May the grace of God and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with us both now and forever. And the church said, Amen. Oh, may the Lord, may the Lord God bless you real good. May the Lord God, may the Lord God bless you real good. Commit your heart, commit your heart to serve him. Commit your heart, commit your heart.